Hi folks, welcome to The Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. This video is not gonna be big doom and gloom, fear porn, the sky is falling, we're all gonna die kind of video. Not even gonna talk about all the crazy stuff that's going on in the news, you know, the sun's exploding on us and debauchery is happening in the Capitol, which is a normal thing there. Uh, Joe Biden's more senile than ever. There's wars all over the place and... Um, you know, food shortages and this and that, all happening, people crossing the border. We all know about that. But maybe sometimes we need to take it back to the most simplest things because in the end, we are trying to become more prepared for what we're about to face, what we are facing. I mean, we're already facing it. It's just a little on the light side right now because it's building momentum and eventually it's gonna hit us. And the likelihood of that hit gonna be very, very hard for all of us it's going to be pretty good. So sometimes we should look at preparedness in really the most simplest terms and not try to get too carried away in what we should be doing. Yes, uh, in, in all areas of your life, you need to be prepared, but let's, let's bring it down to what's the most important things that we should worry about. And for the sake of this video and this argument, I'm not talking about really mental and spiritual preparedness. I mention that quite often in other videos, but this one we're talking more about just the physical stuff, the things and the skills and that kind of stuff. I want you to think for those of you, and this is probably most, that have watched some type of end of the world apocalyptic collapse type of movie uh, or TV show. You know, something like Jericho or Revolution or Book of Eli or something like that. How many of those depicted people surviving after everything fell apart uh, and utilizing technology as the means of their survival? Not very many of them. Uh, in fact, in just about every depiction that Hollywood's ever put out, it always shows people having to go back to the old ways just to survive. And I think that that's a very likely thing that could happen with a lot of us. Um, from all my reading and all the stuff that I've studied and, and just listened to other people that know more than I do, I'm guessing that we're going to eventually find ourselves in a scenario where if you want all that stuff, if you want the technology and the safety nets and the cushy, convenient lifestyle, you're going to have to give away eh, your soul, your DNA, your freedom, all of it. Uh, you're going to have to give it all up to have that kind of stuff. And if you want to have your soul, <laughs> your DNA, your, your purity, I guess, your, your freedom, then you might have to give up all of those, well, modern things that most of us use and like. I mean, you're using modern things right now to watch me as I'm using modern things to make this video. So the first thing that I want to talk about of, well, what's the most basic necessities that we need? And I think really the need is going to be to not need very much. That's really going to be where it comes down to. The less that you need, the better off you're going to be. And so if your preparation plan centers around how to acquire the stuff to make sure that you still have all the modern technology in your life, that I think is going to end up being a weakness. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do those things, that you can't have adequate solar power and adequate technology that makes things easier for you. I'm just saying that if your preparation plan centers around that, is very heavily dependent upon technology existing and working, it could become a big weak spot for you. Um, I think that you should try to do as much as you can on your own with uh, more old-fashioned ways. And that includes producing food, um, keeping your home warm, maintaining just things around the house, medical stuff, um, all of it. You need to learn to do things or at least have the ability to. It doesn't mean you have to live that life right now, but you should at least have the ability to do things in a much simpler fashion than what we have today. Um, 
the, the average person, and, and this is all of us, we are so conditioned and so used to just having stuff readily available. I was speaking with some friends today along this kind of subject, and I said, take food for instance. Even for those of you that cook your meals, uh, you know, a, a lot of you aren't like these modern youngsters that just everything's instant when it comes to the food. Some of you still cook from scratch, right? Well, I mean, what's what we do? Uh, all the food that we eat is whole food cooked from scratch. It's not out of a box. It's not in a microwave or anything like that. But with that being said, we still are used to things being pretty simple. When it comes to cooking things, you have a modern kitchen with running water typically. You have a stove. Uh, you have all these modern conveniences, and it makes just simply cooking a meal pretty easy, even if you're cooking it from scratch. Whereas, just a couple of hundred years ago, and still the case in many third world nations, the act of cooking food is a very laborious thing. Uh, women, which are typically the ones throughout history and in third world nations that do most of the, all the cooking, um, they would spend all day just to make a meal. They would spend all day keeping the fire going. They would spend all day in preparations. Maybe it was harvesting and then grinding the wheat or whatever it was that had to process and produce it to the point and get it down to a point that it could be an ingredient to be used in a meal. And then all that was done by hand in a very laborious way. And so while you know, in today's world, even if you're cooking from scratch, it may take you an hour to two hours to cook a whole meal completely from scratch. Back in the old days, it was better part of a day to do that. And so something that simple of realizing how important it is to know how to do things and have simple ways of doing it and realize the the time, the effort that it takes to just simply cook a meal uh, is going to be is something you should be prepared for. Uh, food, on the other hand, is, is actually a very important thing. And I think that too many times myself and many, many others, well, we don't put enough focus on it. And unfortunately, when we do put a lot of focus on it, it goes and falls on deaf ears a lot. And it's not so much that it's deaf ears. I think it's just you're tired of it and you think, well, I'm a prepper. I know the most basic step in preparedness is your food. Yes, we all know that, but how well do we realize that? You see, when it all falls apart, I can't guarantee you that you'll ever use your rifle or your handgun. I cannot guarantee you that there will ever be a situation where you actually have to really defend your homeland against some type of danger. I can't guarantee you that it will all be chaos and Book of Eli, Mad Max kind of situation. But I can guarantee you that in any period, any kind of collapse, breakdown, any kind of situation, any kind of situation, even if it's just a tornado that blows through your area, whatever it is, I can guarantee you that you will need to eat. You will have to have food. And that's something that, again, it's so simple and we take it for granted, but you're gonna have to have it. And if things last for a lengthy time, or even if it's not that the collapse is lengthy, but it comes back and now the only thing to eat is bugs and genetically modified bioengineered organisms, and you realize that that's just not something you're gonna put in your body, then you're going to have to produce your own food or you're going to have to have good relationships with other people that produce food also, so that you can make sure everyone gets the food that they need. We do not, and I think this is, and I'm, I'm not saying this to everyone else, I'm saying it to myself too. I think most all preppers do not put enough emphasis on our food production. Some of you put a lot more than others, but still, I don't believe we put enough emphasis on how much food we're producing. Food production is quite possibly one of the most important things that we can do. Yes, it's great to have food stored away, food in buckets, food in cans, uh, freeze-dried food, whatever it is, dehydrated food. It's, it's all very important. 
but we need to be focusing heavily on food production and what you can produce and how you can gather more food, whether it's through food that you grow on your own or wild harvest or, or, or raise as a four-legged or two-legged creature, you need to be putting a heavy focus on food production because food, like I just said a moment ago, it's not so much of whether or not it's gonna be available. It's the question is becoming what will be available is it something that you're willing to consume and put into your body? And so when we look at things that way, we realize that it's not even gonna take a major collapse to make food very important and the production of food very important. So folks, I'm telling you, you need to be producing food. And I can tell you from personal experience, it takes a whole lot more space, land, effort, energy, uh, and, and everything else than what you think of to produce food. Um, we put out, uh, between a nine and 10,000 square foot garden space. Uh, our, our total garden space is somewhere between nine and 10,000 square foot. And I personally don't feel that that's enough. I, I don't feel that that's enough. Um, and so we're constantly expanding and trying to figure out new ways and, and bigger ways and different areas of the property to expand our food production. And that's growing things. Same thing with animals. We're constantly trying to figure out how we can squeeze a little bit more out of our property uh, when it comes to meat production or some type of protein, whether it be eggs or meat. Because as much as we are doing, I don't feel it's enough. And I'm telling you folks, what you might see in a video or in a magazine where it shows some 10 by 20 foot garden, that's nice and it's a start but it's not going to be enough to live out of. And you need to be really ramping up your food production. Other areas, they're just, it's the simple basics. Uh, shelter, look, th this is a good thing to just think about. What are the basic necessities of a human? What are your basic necessities just to live off of? Just to, just to exist. And that's really where sh we should be thinking. What are the basic necessities? Food is one of them. Shelter is another one. Shelter, not just in the sense that you have a roof over your head, but it, you can you keep yourself warm uh, when it's cold? Can you keep yourself dry when it's wet? But most importantly, can you have that shelter in a place that's actually survivable? And if your shelter is, you know, in some apartment in Chicago or something, that's probably not the most survivable place on the planet or a, a bunker on a, a volcanic island that could go at any moment probably those kind of places aren't the best ideal spots to put your shelter. So shelter is not just that it's a dry place or a warm place to be, but it's also a place that's defensible, that's, that's safe, that's secure, and that also means the location that it's at. So be thinking about that one. And then another one, medical. Medical is, is super big. Along with the guarantee that you will need to eat is a guarantee that at some point you're going to need some kind of medical, whether it's medicine or just medical care because of an injury. If you go back and you look uh, throughout history, the vast majority of deaths, they really weren't because of things like cancer and diabetes and heart disease and stuff because most of those did not exist. And while many people did die because of, you know, death and war and stuff, because it was more bloody back then, the vast majority of people died simply because they got an infection uh, because of a cut. They got, they got injured and they had no way of keeping that, that wound clean from infection. Now today we do have medicines that can do that, but those aren't as easily available in a collapse. And even if they are, if you don't have proper wound care, you can still get an infection and die. So just the basic things of having proper bandage and hygiene and simple medicines is going to be so paramount because today we don't think about that. You get sick, you get hurt, you go to the hospital or you go to the doctor and everything's taken care of. When all that goes away or just isn't available to you, it could mean the difference between life and death when it comes to just a simple injury. So make sure you have the adequate materials to take care of injuries and illnesses and the adequate knowledge and training to do that because that is a basic necessity. Uh, one of the last ones, well, I guess it will be the last one, is water. I mean, we talk about water all the time. 
you have to have water to live folks you can't go more than about three days without water and so water water is critical it's critical to to drink it's critical in cooking it's critical in hygiene uh, it's just critical right you have to have it and while today it's it's pretty easy most all of you can just instantly turn a faucet on and have water and even if you don't have that faucet or you say well my backup is something like this a creek or whatever yeah even in today's world while i wouldn't necessarily want to drink this water all the time i know that this water is clean enough that that i could be all right with it and a lot of waterways are still that way in the country even though you still have to treat them the problem is is that we have about the world's best sewage uh, control system our, our our systems here in the united states to to clean and to process sewage is the best in the world and when everything falls apart, if there was any kind of grid failure or attack or just people not able to man those systems, where does all that sewage go? Well, eventually it's going to roll downhill. You've all heard the, the story that, you know, doo-doo, where it goes. It always goes downhill. And downhill, it's always these places. So the water that, while today isn't clean tap water but it's still probably maybe because this is spring fed is not going to kill you after it all falls apart and all that sewage ends up someplace it's going to be like drinking out of one of those rivers or lakes you've seen over in india where it's just a complete disgusting cesspool and it's going to make it a lot more difficult to purify you know those filters that you have to as backup to purify water they're going to get clogged real real fast when that water gets really really dirty and so having a plan on how to take care of water to store it a source to get it a way to purify it and to make it sterile to make it drinkable folks that's that's important because um when things fall apart throughout history especially in the modern world when they fall apart water systems always get hurt first they get hurt really bad in fact just a few weeks ago there was a cyber attack on a water system i believe up in pennsylvania so i assure you that's going to be on their list to take out if there's some type of cyber or terrorist attack is going to be water systems and when things just fall apart well your water systems are going to fail and they're going to become very very contaminated so you better have a real solid plan on how to acquire good, clean drinking water. I know these things that I've said are so, so basic. And there's some of you that are like, oh, I'm way more advanced than this. I already know all this kind of stuff. You're not telling me anything I don't know. I get it. But sometimes the most basic things, those basic needs that we have to just survive sometimes get looked over. We, we focus on all the cool tactical stuff. We focus on all the stuff that gets us emotionally going. And a lot of times we forget about the very basic needs that we have just to exist. And if we're not taking care of those in our preparedness plan, then I'm afraid many people are going to fail. Yes, it's good to have other things in your preparedness plan. I've talked about those at length many times, defense and other things. But if you're not taking care of your basic needs and have a solid plan to produce food, clean drinking water, take care of your medical problems, folks, I don't know what to tell you because those are just the things that you need just to wake up every day. And if you're not doing that, you're gonna it's gonna hurt folks you need to be getting your houses in order and preparing yourselves mentally physically and spiritually thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next video